Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, this has a black sport print. So we go way back here to the black guys. Four is rusty brown, five is dull brown or orange, six is key six, purple brown, smoky gray, gray or black. Okay, so this is black. Okay. So the first question in here is gills decurrent and thick. Who knows? You can't see them. But if you would turn it upside down and look at the mushroom, the gills would be really close together and thin. I should have turned it upside down and taken a picture too to show you. So it's not the first one. It's not Gonfidiaceae. The flesh and gills are yellow, orange, or dull, or red. It sure doesn't look like that second mushroom. Okay, so nope, we're not there yet. Okay, gills not decurrent or thick or spaced far apart. Spores dark, purple, brown, or black. Yeah, they're black. Okay, so then we ask our questions. The fruiting body is medium to large, stalk substantial. Veil leaves a membranous ring. Doesn't have a veil or a ring, and it's not stalky. It's not substantial. It's not. So then, like I said, the, hard, the hardest mushrooms to identify are those with dark spores. So you go to the key on the right, you keep going because there's got another whole page because there's so many. So it's like it says on the top of on key six, fruiting bodies small to medium and or fragile stalks, most tall and thin, veil present or absent, veil ring, same thing. Spores purple, brown, or black. That's what leads you to the next page. Okay? So we go to key seven. Okay. Gills liquefying to a black ink. Black inky spore print. So it's a coprinus of some kind. It's not shaggy mane, but it's a coprinus. And then you have to look in the books and see which species, and this one should be easy. It should be in the book, too. Black and white <laughs> on this one page. But anyway, you can just look at the pictures and see which one it looks like. But it's better if it has a color picture because it definitely differentiates it. But you just so then you just go to the coprinus in the book and see which one it is. Do they look different at different ages? Oh yeah, when it gets older, it's going to be shriveled up and black and inky gooey. It'll just be a blob. Okay. But they're um, white when they're young, right? They're all white. Well, no, this one isn't. Oh, it isn't. Uh, shaggy manes are, but oh. this one is a different. Uh, I think this is Plicatus, but um, no, they, there's lots of different inky caps too. Uh, but this one is going to look like this even when it's little. It's not going to no. be white. But you know, it's a coprinus. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, now here's a beautiful purple one. But it's got a white spore print, okay? Okay, so this is another challenging one. So we start with key one because it's white. Now you're getting good at this. We can go faster. <laughs> no vulva, forget about it, don't read the rest. Gills free from snipe, no, they're attached. Okay. Gills attached to the stalk in some way, definitely. Is it a big, thick mushroom with wide gills? No. Okay, gills thinner and closer, moist but not waxy, yes. Stem thick and brittle. No, it's not that real big, thick kind of stem like the brucellas. No. 
So then we go over to the far right, stem fibrous, cartilaginous or pliant, stem absent in a few, ring present or absent. Here's that family of trifluomatacee that I told you is 64 genera. Okay, I don't have all 64 genera of this family. This little thing's just a you know, beginning kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but we go to the next key and see if we can find it. I put in as many as the paper would allow. So we go to E2, and let's see if we can find it, okay? So we go to key two, ring on the stipe, no. Stock off center or lateral, no. Stock present is central on wood or soil, it's on soil. Now, is the stock fleshy and fibrous and, and substantial, no. substantial, then it forms into two, either the trichlomatode type where it's a big stipe or the clytosopide stipe where it's slightly decurrent, gills decurrent or short decurrent. I mean, this is so short decurrent, <laughs> but it is decurrent, see? Mm -hmm. So this is where when you're at home you can get really confused. So it is short decurrent. So we're in the clytosopy type. So we'll just read the various genera and see what it sounds like. Is it fleshy and funnel shaped? I mean, funnel shaped is really funnel shaped, so that's a no. Lipistic, cap margin enrolled. Well, a tiny bit, but the spore print is not dull pinkish, it's white. So it's not a lipistic. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Lyophilum, it stains black when you touch it. This doesn't, has no staining characteristics at all. Leucopaxillus is a gigantic thing. I mean, it's, it's a huge mushroom. Flesh is tough and enrolled. There's a big mycelial mat of fiber at the base of it, and that's not the case. Lacaria, thick gills, pink or violet flesh, and gills widely spaced. It's a lacaria. Yeah, I have a question on that because I, up at the top, we, so we decided that the stock was fleshy, fibrous, and substantial. And so but see, that's where you could get mixed up. Yeah, because I would. Because when you think of the big, thick ones, it's yeah. not that. So how do you decide that? Yeah. Yeah. But it looks like you have to feel it. So how do you tell the difference between fleshy, fibrous, and hardy? Well, when you break a, you know, like a coprinus or something, it just almost shreds, you know. Now this doesn't break like a piece of chalk, but it will break evenly, and it's, it's firm, like the little tiny mushrooms, I mean, differentiating it from them, but you could get mixed up here, you know. So, it's not a cut and dry deal. Well, let's just see how, we can yeah don't now this is now this is thin and fibrous site look at that site now that is an example of a really you try to break this thing and it almost won't break it just sh kind of shreds and it has a white spore print and there's zillions of these little tiny things around okay so let's look at the white spore print so we start at page one again or key one. Okay, vulva present. Now you guys all know what amnitis are like now. Uh, no vulva present. Uh, does it have a ring? No, it sure doesn't look like a lepiota. Hygrophrase, is it thick of substantial? No. Nope. Gills thin and closer, definitely thin and close gills. Stem thick and brittle, no way. 
So we go over to stem fibrous, carnalagus, trichelomatase again. So we have to go to page P2 to see which one. Okay. <clears throat> No ring, stock off center, no, it's central. Stock present in central on wood <coughs> or soil, and this does grow on wood. Stock fleshy and fibrous, definitely not in this one. Stock thin and cartilaginous, definitely, it's a little tiny thing. Now we look at, go down, gills decurrent, no, they're up at the top, it's not, they don't come down this type. Cap conical to campitulate, which is that curved margin not enrolled, mycenoid type. It's shaped just like the picture on the right. Striate, and you can't really see it from the cap, but it's a mycena. And it's got little, like little dents or little striations in the cap when you look at it, if the picture were clear. So mycena, and there's millions of different kinds of mycena, and none of them are edible or worth anything, but they're beautiful. So that's a mycena. Okay, let's see what else we have. You guys probably know what this is right off. Nope. Okay, well, get to know it because it's very good to eat. So it's a white spore print, and on the back, it's attached directly to wood, okay? So let's go to key one again. So no, it's not an ammonitis, so we'll just move right across. It doesn't have a ring. It's, the gills are decurrent. Now you could get mixed up here, except hygrophorus, you might make a note on your page there. Hygrophorus grow on the ground, they don't grow on wood. I should put that on there too. See how you guys are helping me out here? I'm going to make this even better. Okay. So this grows on wood, so that's not what that is. The gills thin and close, not particularly. They're medium. But it definitely isn't, doesn't have milk, and it's not a central stem like the Lactarius or the Rusula. Okay, so we go over to key two again. It's part of the Trichlobotaceae family but it's white gill, so we go to key two, okay? Ring on stipe, no. Stock off center. Yeah, yeah look how it goes back in there. Lateral or absent, sometimes it can be absent and it grows on wood. Lentinus has scaly caps. Look how smooth and nice those caps are. Panielis is viscid, slimy. That's not, it's smooth. Uh, panis caps tough are not overlapping. These are not cat, they're not, I mean fibrous like wood almost, that's what that means. Really hard caps. Foliotopsis is yellow and orange. This one isn't. Pluteus, fleshy, thick caps. It's a pluteus, which is an oyster mushroom. And they grow on dead cottonwoods, dead aspens, Populous family, and they're very good to eat. But now that you know what an ammonita looks like, you're never going to confuse it. Doesn't have the bulb, but grows on wood. Ammonita grows on the ground. It's mycorrhizal with trees, so it's very different. You can't mess it up. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Are all that edible? The yeah, all the pluteus are edible. So the panis. Are those more like conks? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay, now here's one with a rusty brown spore print. And there's going to be millions of these in the forest. Even Dr. Miller didn't try to identify them. He always <laughs> kind of put them off on the end of the table. <laughs> they are so difficult. There's one man, there's no good identification book for this uh, genus. But they're beautiful, they're beautiful mushrooms. But you're gonna see a lot of them. But the rusty brown spore print is a dead giveaway. And you don't even have to do a spore print on this one because 
look, you can see the spores have dropped off the edge of the gills and landed on that little cobwebby cortina they have. So you can see the rusty brown spore print right off. And that happens a lot of times. So let's go to the rusty brown key, wherever that is. Pink, key four. rusty brown, key four. Okay, so this is where we start. Okay. No stock present or if present gills are strongly decurrent. They're definitely not decurrent. In fact, they have that little notch. They're attached, but the, you have to turn the mushroom up absolutely upside down to see that they go down a little bit and then they go across and touch the spike. So it's not that first part. Stock is present and gills are not strongly decurrent. That's true. Is the stock thin and fragile? Hardly. Nope. Okay, so go to the far right. Stocks are fleshy and fibrous. Caps, medium to large. Spores, various colors. True. So we have to go to key five to look and see more. Okay. Mushroom veil, usually seen as a ring. No ring on that guy, okay? It's fibrous, hairy, uh-huh. Or veil usually present. They call it a cortina, but it looks a lot different than the ring of tissue that you see on the other ones. It's real cobwebby looking kind of thing, so it's real different. Okay, so it is the fibrous hairy, so let's go down here. Spores dull medium brown. No, they're rusty brown. So the far right, spores bright rusty brown, cortina conspicuous. You can see the cobwebs. Mm -hmm. So it's A? It's a On the far right, cortinarians. Cor oh, cortinarians. Cortinarians. Okay. And none of those are edible, so make a note. Uh, they're not going to kill you, but you know, they're no good. Okay, dark purple brown spark print. So let's figure out where we should be here. Six. Yep, okay, key six. Dark brown, purple brown, smoky gray or black. Okay, gills decurrent. Definitely not. Doesn't look like any of those. They're not decurrent. They're attached, but they don't come down the site. Okay, so we go over here. Gills not to current or thick or space far apart. Spores dark purple brown or black. They're purple brown. Fruiting body medium to large. Stock substantial. Can, and versus the little thin mycenocytes. Yes. Uh, veil leaves a ring. This is where you could get confused because there is a ring right here, but it's disappearing. And as you handle the mushroom, you just rub it off. So it's also important to identify mushrooms as soon as you can when you find them because they dry up or they quit staining, like some you touch and they stain purple or the milk's red or whatever. You know, so it's important to identify them you know, within a day or two or put them in a brown paper bag and put them in the fridge. They'll keep for a week. but. Some of these characteristics disappear, but it does have a little ring and it definitely has a purple brown spore print. So it is a stropharia. And you know that because of the ring. And then the agaricus, the one next to it is the store-bought mushroom that we eat all the time. So that's a purple brown. Okay. This next one has some white spore print again. So we go to key one. So the first question I ask ourselves, does it have a vulva? No. Does it have a ring? No. Now, gills attached to the stalk in some way. I mean, they're notched. You can't, I didn't take the picture of where I was 
you see underneath very clear, but it is attached at the top. Now here's where you get cat medium to large, usually